parenting. Hoes. Drugs. Bitches. Father figures. Bitch niggas. Mentors. Alcoholics. People that you need in your goddamn life. Crackheads. Entrepreneur. New crackheads. Successful business people. Ugly children. Welcome to NTS, which stands for niggas talking shit. With uh, Jeff Brown, I'm your, your co-host with my man Big Hurt. Big 916. Hurt. 916. Um, wow. You gonna tell them how we how we hooked up and why we doing this? You you know the universe brings people into your world, and um, I was fortunate enough to meet this gentleman on a writing project through a fluke, and um, you know actually it wasn't a fluke; it was meant to be because um, we have a mutual friend, um, Robert Hines, who introduced us, wow, yeah. and um, from there it just things just clicked. And we've been working on a really big project that it's going to be doing some big things real soon. But uh, we just started collaborating on all type of ideas. And this is one of them is uh, niggas talking shit. Yeah. I'm glad you got to the collaboration part because the first part sounded a lot like a Tinder interview. It was a lot like <laughs> yeah. this, just click, things just went wonderfully. And now that's not what this is. This is it's my man. Well, it's a man shit. Uh, I think I think was lost is the ability for younger people to access wisdom. They mm -hmm. get information anywhere. Yes. You can get information on a cell phone. You can tell me what temperature it is in Calcutta right now. But can you navigate your life with some common sense? And I think a lot of that's missing, and this show should plug right into that lane. So. <clears throat> well, it's, it's a lot of the, uh, the OGs that we used to call them or in my neighborhood, the big homies who used to kind of give you some words of wisdom, whether it's in the back of the mini truck on the way home, you know, hey, y'all right. said blah, 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 or, you know, in the cafeteria line or on the basketball court, you know, hanging out, you would hear something or at the park that would kind of strike you and you would think about, you know, you, how mm. you carried yourself. And, you know, you grew up in Chi-Town, so you know, like, you, there was people in the neighborhood that always has some game. Even the the old guy who used to drink, he has something wise to say, right. you know, with the bottle right. in the bag. So you don't have that. You don't have that anymore. A lot of those guys are either they're dead, they they cracked out the game, or they're in the pen. And um, I feel this is our way of giving back. It's like give sure. you all some real some real shit right here with this niggas talking shit. Yeah, just regular, no no filter between us and you. No. Avuncular, we have, we know everything. You don't know shit. Not not from that place at all, but from a place of look here, youngster. Let me holler at you about this. Uh, at least for me, I know I owe everybody under the age of forty an apology for where we are right now, because I'm a fifty-something, and I can promise you, in the eighties, me and a bunch of niggas like me wasn't doing shit. We went into no protest and no, I had the Africa patch and I had a, a public enemy CD, but to actually be out there like Dr. King was out there, no. So I think this whole of questions, this, 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 this valley of uncertainty, I helped to dig. I'm sorry. Whatever you need, holler at me, holler at him. Send us questions. What's on your mind? What do you think? We know a little something. Both grown, both on this side of the bars, both reasonably healthy uh, black men that don't live on their mama couch. There's something we can tell you. And that's what this show's about. <clears throat> hey, with that in mind, you know, while you were talking, I was just thinking about something that popped in my head. And um, it was an OG that I interviewed from Compton named Gangster, uh, somebody who's, who's been through a whole lot, reputable individual from Southern California. And, um, you know, he told me when we were doing his interview that, uh, you know, that he had been bamboozled. Hmm. And when he started breaking down bamboozled, and as far as, like, the gang banging, the black-on-black -black violence, just the lack of, um, you know, integrity among the black community or sense of self um 
it's it's been one of the greatest plays on the young black men and I've you know I can't say that um I'm innocent from all of it because when I was young up until a point you know I bought into it you know I I felt that it gave me a sense of belonging or to one of uh assert some type of violence towards somebody that looked like me it made me somebody and uh i just think that you know it's sad at the end of the day and i know a lot of youngsters like oh gee you talking that bullshit man you dude you you know you gotta you gotta stay with your blinky and blah 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 and i'm like thinking to myself well you're buying right into what they expect you to buy in just imagine if with that same energy that you said you're willing to die for that you're willing to represent this if you put that into building your legacy as far as your business your 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 future foundation you know your 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 family business imagine with that type of dedication and and a sense of drive what they could accomplish wow and, you know, when I see dudes, I've seen them <clears throat> penitentiary tattoos on their face, mm -hmm. you know, swole, gang banged out, claiming a, a city or a block or whatever, and, you know, willing to die for that. I mean, dude, what if you were willing to live to make shit happen in the business world? Wow. Because you have the, the, the dedication, it's just in the wrong direction, and you, everybody you're affecting, they all look like you. These are people who are in the same boat. They're not wealthy. They're not people of of a particular um, wealth group. These are poor people, just like you. They have brothers and sisters, cousins, nieces. You've known a lot of them. You don't probably slept with a couple of the dudes you don't had beef with, girlfriends or or nieces or cousins, whatever the case. But it's just a cesspool, and all you guys are doing is just keep it's each the same pool of people. Same same pool of people. Okay. Uh I believe I asked this question for a lot of people. Uh, we're going to go back about a minute and a half. What's a blinky? Blinky, some people call a, a, a knife, but a blinky could be a pistol. 22, it could be a 38. You know what I mean? I keep my blinky on me. That means you're ready. Okay. You know, an ISA rider, I had a blinky. I kept it, you know, just like it was a, a part of like a credit card. You should pull that thing out when it, you right, know, need, when you need it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I'm the heater... Burner. Uh, burner. Yeah. I had all that. Blinky, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, you know, Blinky's another, it's another alias for Thank you, for sir. A well, I, I'm a, yeah, okay. I'll take that. Um, I think that a lot of, um, a lot of energy gets misplaced. Um, a lot of anger is misplaced amongst these cats. And when you when you start to break down why they do what they do, the what is strong. You know who the who is. The who ain't nobody but people who look like you. The why falls apart. When you look at any gangbanger and go, okay, who are the, who are the two rival gangs in your city? Bloods and Crips, uh, GDs and the Vice Lords. Uh, do, you know, do you know why? You are a blood and not a crip. Because of where your grandmama lived. Your grandmama lived around here. Your mama had it hard, moved back around here with you. And this is why you were 60. This is why you were 8 Trey. This is why you Grave Street. Because of where your grandmama lived. Not because of any other particular heritage passed down. Not the dudes around you who are down with your set are down with your set because of where they grandmama live. So you really are telling me that you are upset with a dude across town because of where his grandmama live? Mm -hmm. That's really, y'all <clears throat> really fighting over your grandmama's addresses because you don't own any of this real estate. And if you really want to take ownership of it, you're going to have to get in a time machine and go back to um, where the Crips and the Bloods and the GDs come from. And um, this place that they were, and I don't only know from a few things that I've read and heard that uh, 
like CRIP stands for Community Resistance and Progress. And that is kind of what it started as. I know growing up in Chicago, around my way, uh, shout out to 60 from Damon, um, there were certain laws that the gang members had in my neighborhood. Like if they were, if they were looking for you, let's just say your mom rode the 63rd Street bus and they knew that. They looking for you. They'll be right there when your mama get off work. Hey, Miss Timmons, how you doing? Uh-uh, you can't carry that. We got that. They're going to walk her home. Oh, she is safer than anybody else in the neighborhood right now. Ain't nobody going to bother her. Hey, what you, how you doing, Miss Timmons? Have you seen Mark? <clears throat> They're looking for you. Yeah. They're not looking for her. They're not driving by shooting babies in the head. They're not. The It was like certain rules applied and certain people and certain things were off limits. And those limits are gone now. Well, even with you saying that, I remember, I can't remember which mobster said it, but he's like, in our neighborhood, a woman could walk down the street in a fur coat with $50,000 worth of pearls, her jewels on, and know that nobody's going to rob her. Nobody's going to rob her. Not around here. No. Who? No. There's going to be none of that. And so when you think about, like, you know, you talk about community activism or looking out for the community or mm -hmm. providing something of uh, stability, mm -hmm. what are you really giving back to community that's helping the community grow? You know, at the end of the day, that liquor store you go to that's bordering two different sets or two different neighborhoods, they making money off of both y'all. Right. Y'all can't, but you, you, you aren't intertwining or interacting with this demographic over here, but yet they're benefiting from both of you guys. Oh, they make money hand over fist. They make money from uh, when you come out your mama till you go in the casket. There is a poverty money cycle that you can't positively be a part of if you just play the game on the surface level. Um, I've spoken to a lot of cats about this. I don't, I don't look at gang members as anything other than lost tribesmen. They're lost. They're lost. They're, uh, but yeah, but uh, well, how long do you give them that pass as far as lack of responsibility? Because oh. at a certain point, now I would say back in the day, you had cats who were somewhat lost because of maybe opportunities or certain economic situations, but now... Dude, with the smartphone, with the computer, with all this resources at your hands, there's a lot that you can be doing. So it's not like you're really stuck just to a block. I mean, when I was doing my thing, before I got anything involved in the street and my mom tried her best to keep me out the bullshit, mm -hmm. I tried writing, a Ni writing Nike, I wrote Adidas, I was trying to design shoes, I wrote in television, I wrote Coleco to try to design video games. I tried to look in the yellow pages, start a clothing line. I did all these different things, man, but I had nobody around me that had any type of independent entrepreneurial business sense that told me about a DBA, about an LLC, about how to find distribution or resourcing or, or you know, setting up a, a brand. I, I, I was doing branding before I even knew what it was. I didn't even know what it was. Now this absence, this absence of guidance, do you think it was because the people around you didn't want the guidance? Do you think it was, uh, um, and again, I can explain a lot more than I can excuse. I don't excuse, and, and again, let me let me preface this by, by saying first, bro, you know you know where I come from. I come from absolutely nothing, everything. Everything I've ever been given, I had to bust my natural ass to get. And the last thing I can abide at all is a lazy motherfucker with a mouthful of excuses. I cannot stand them. I have a belief that excuses and results cannot possibly occupy the same space. So this is not about what I'm trying to excuse as opposed to what I'm trying to explain. And... I believe that it is a fair estim estimation, it is a fair explanation to say that that vacuum 
that void of information, that rich dad, poor dad scenario. Great book, by the way, Read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Bob Kiyosaki. That rich dad, poor dad situation that you found yourself in. I don't think you were there because the people around you were born not giving a fuck. I don't think that the, the, that void of information came from a group of dudes, a group of brothers that went, OK, fuck our families on three. Ready? Break. I don't think that's what happened. I think that in order to look at this problem, you it, it's it's easy. It's easy to just look at dudes and go, well, you ain't shit. Your boys ain't shit. You don't want shit. So fuck y'all. It's, that's what I can I can go there. And there is some merit to it, but it seems to me that people always look at the bad in the hood and who's bad in the hood, and nobody ever talks about how it got there. Nobody ever talks about, everybody talks about the gone. We talk about it because this is something I believe we share as a lot of times we the only nigga in the room. I, well, how did you get there? Well, there we, we know, I mean... Those environments, as far as it, whether it's the, the, the these these railroad cars, when they tell them the people like you know her story in Chicago, where a uh, car number fifty five has a bunch of crates of straps up in it, or you know we want these guys over here to make it look like they're beefing with these guys over here. I mean, it's by design to have everybody basically neutralize each other so that we don't have to worry about them coming across. Um, let's say the 105 freeway in LA or whatever, you know, uh, invisible fence we have there. Oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, all I'm saying is the bamboozle, if you see it and you can kind of realize like, hold on, man, because you can kind of, you, you know, I've been to juvenile hall. Mm -hmm. I've been to why I've been in green puke looking rooms, rooms with snot on the wall, blood on the wall. I've been in, you know, CYA, I've, the federal pen, and I've seen and I see the same cycle. So I'm looking at the bamboozle. And, at, it's, you know, at some point, I think one of my saving graces was the fact that, that I did see something outside of that. So I knew there was something else that existed. And, you know, having been exposed to other, you know, other elements that, People had very high levels of success. They had, um, you know, a household with two parents in them. You know, people were more focused on education rather than, um, you know, who had the latest Jordans on. Things of that nature, I realized that, okay, there is some other stuff out there. I just have to tune into it. But I think for a lot of these cats, and I'm not trying to beat them up in the fact that, hey, man, you're no good because you are involved in the gang. I'm saying... There's so much more potential out there. And as you, but in order to get to that other potential, you have to be able to um, acclimate into another environment. And if you already have all these other things that prevent you from going over there, you, you, you'll you be stopped before you can ever make it. So, you know, when they say, oh, that guy's a square, he's a nerd, he's, or, you know, whatever. Dude, those are the ones winning. Bruh. Bruh. Those are the ones winning. The dude who looks like um, Urkel, the guy over here who can, you know, talk well, you know, articulate himself, who who has, you know, uh, maybe some background and and w whatever art or whatever engineer, he's going to go far because yeah. they've tricked you into thinking that by being this dude who talks a certain way that it's not black enough. Oh, you're not black. You're a coon because you talk too proper or you trying to be white. What is being white? Yeah, don't let any... Uh, teenagers, dear teenagers, listen to the sound of my voice. Those of you who are way cooler than the rest of your class, enjoy where you are now because you've peaked. You've peaked. This is it. Go your way down. Dear nerds, nerds, hold on. Just hold on. That girl that's treating you like a wet food stamp right now, Wait about 15 years. Mm -hmm. You're going to see her riding around in a minivan with three kids and bad skin. It's coming. Don't worry about it. You just keep grinding. Just keep pushing. You own to something. You right. You're going to discover the next. You're going to do whatever. Just keep mashing. The nerds peak later. Nerds run the world. Yeah. yeah. Bill Gates, nerd. Elon Musk. Nerd. 
Jeff Bezos, nerd. Well, nobody lining up to fuck them three in high school, but look at them now. Keep studying. Yeah, it's um, it, it's definitely the, the greatest trick I think played is convincing all these young black and brown men that in order to be somebody, they, they have run, to run, jump, pass, sing, well, laugh. They dance. have to prove themselves by having committed an act of violence or some other thing towards somebody else that looks like them. Hmm. Greatest trick ever played, man. Well, yeah, yeah, it's it, it is sad, and I, I, I got a, I got a bit more faith in uh, a lot of the youth that I have been seeing. Um, I think that with where society's going, and again, I'm not about unplugging people. I'm about guiding the unplugged. Where society is going, there are enough unplugged, motivated young people that are kicking some serious ass that you're going to see. It's going to take a minute because you, they got so much bullshit in front of them and for so long that they're going to have to break through this membrane of propaganda and of custom and of uh, status quo. But I think they're going to do it. I think in, in, the, in the next five years, you're going to see from the 20-somethings some miraculous shit that's because they didn't have. You, you got a group of people now who are adults that did not have access to the quote unquote American dream at all whatsoever because it was sent out. It was sent overseas in the form of jobs. So they didn't have any of this. The people that don't sit still in that, the people that don't woe is me in that, the people that don't just go fuck everybody, fuck the world, I'm finna do this dumb shit in that, those people are gonna lead. Those people, I, 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 I really can't count them out. It's not all of them. It's a precious few, but those people are gonna get out. I think that's who, and I really believe that that's who we are talking to. I've had countless cats hit me, uh, Uncle Jeff, that thing you said about credit or that thing you said about relationships or that thing you said about friends really, really set me in a place that I needed to be, really helped me out. I think that's one of the key places I want this show to plug in is to help brothers who don't have don't have a herc sitting around that they can just come and knock on the door and get that wisdom. I hear you. There you guys have it. Niggas talking shit. Keeping it real. Jeff Brown, Big Herc, not shit.